A good process or a workflow must be as simple as possible to avoid opportunities for errors in execution. Every efficient process or a workflow comes with some certain degree of discipline to achieve successful results. Documenting architecture projects in Archicad start with modeling. The understanding and the discipline of modeling for documentation are the key fundamentals of the whole process. Archicad uses BIM tools and objects to put together a model for a project. So you need to understand the necessary information to feed in your model to execute a successful construction documentation. What I'm going to demonstrate here or share with you is the fundamentals of carrying out a successful and efficient construction documentation in Archicad. Let us start this by looking at the views of view map and layer combinations. Layer combinations are named sets or groups of layer settings. It works together with the view map to create a specific view parts of the project. For an example, if you want to create an electrical plan or plan view, what we'll show in this view is a set or groups of electrical elements layer settings. This will help us filter and separate data accordingly to our views without affecting different parts of the project. Think about it where you have everything showing or layers turned on. It will be a complete mess and difficult to read the information on the drawing. Let us use this drawing as an example. Here what I have under the view map, I've created a list of drawings that share the same viewports, which is basically under the project map, is ground floor level. And then these drawings, they use um, the layer combinations to control and manage information that's supposed to display in each every drawing. So if you look at the properties of each drawing here, so if I select one here, if you go under properties, there is a layer combination that is tagged in for each drawing. If you go to layer settings, for example, and then you see the active layer combination of the current view. And then under layers, it's a set of layers that are supposed to display or that are supposed to be active in this current view. So basically, this is how you, you, you create, sort, and separate information in Archicad for different parts of your, your drawings. Another important fundamental is to use data-driven annotation tools. For efficient and sustainable annotation and labeling in Archicad, you use data-driven tools. This will extract data from elements and automate any changes that may occur. It's a time saver. This can only be successful if you assemble or model your project with BIM tools and objects that are data driven. So you need to understand to model for documentation. For an example, in this equipment and furniture layout, we have a coding or numbering of all equipment and furniture in this uh, drawing. So these are annotation tools that are driven, are data driven, like I said. But you can do it in a different way. You can do it manually or you can do it in an advanced or automated way. So any changes that will happen or occur in these objects or furniture, the annotation is supposed to adjust accordingly. So let us do this and see as an example. So I'll go to object two and then select all elements in this or all objects in this drawing. So I'll go under document, then listing and extract to access the element ID manager. From here, I'm going to change the format for the labeling. So instead of just having a code like this 07, I'm going to use a, a prefix that will define the ruling of my labeling. So FE, I think is fine. FE stands for furniture and equipment. That will be perfect. And then I'll change the ID. Auto Archicad will automatically um, compute this ruling. So this is an example of all the elements being assigned a code. So I'll hit OK. Automatically, every 
label will change according to the changes that we made. Interactive schedule is another fundamental. It allows us to calculate and quantify the contents of our building information models by accessing the geometric data and information stored in each element and component in a formatted editable tables. You can also use interactive schedules to add data for elements and components. This is an example on how you can play around with schedules. What I did here, I created a legend that is based on the interactive schedule. So if I open this from here, and then I uh, can interact with these elements that are specifically for the tiling layer. These are different types of um, finishes that we have in this building, for example. So if I pick one here and then interact with, I'll change this one. Let me change the specification to something like um, ceramic. What this will do, it will activate this FL05 item. The information will be now updated and stored in this element. So, so whatever view that this part is available, so this information to be displayed or updated automatically. That's the important part of using interactive schedule. As you can see, it has this label here, so it will change to ceramic floor tile. The last fundamental that I will share is the graphic override combination. This will allow us to create a collection of graphics for a specific view model elements for drawing presentations. So if we go back to our view map to access the list of our drawings, each and every drawing here has a standard way of doing graphics. So graphics in ArchiCAD are controlled by using a pen set for each and individual element. So it would be tedious for us to change these elements, pen sets, under settings to ad address the standards, the graphic standards of each um, drawing here. Rather, we use the the graphic override uh, graphic override combination. Sorry. And then we create rules that are based on the that are based on the classification of our elements. Say, for example, a group of these elements, we want them to show red in this view. For example, if it's an electrical layout. So let, let me pick electrical as an example here. So I have the electrical model, and then if I edit the rules, you see it says element type. This is the criteria that I've selected all electrical elements to group them and then I set and or I override the style of the ruling. Every element here is supposed to be in this graphic main. So that's basically how you control this um, instead of uh, do it manually. So if I go to the electrical plan here and then I change the override to electrical it will represent the electrical pen in a manner that I want. So that's how basically we, we control and manage the graphic part of this. So don't depend much on the pen sets. Uh, pen sets going forward, I don't think it will work, but I don't know, to some certain level, it will still be relevant. But this feature of graphic overhead combinations is developing and it's, it's going to be powerful. This wasn't a step-by-step -step tutorial. If you want an in-depth tutorial, I'm working on a course to help you transform the quality of your architecture design and construction documentation to the next level. So you can be part of the development of this course by giving us topics or challenges you would want the course to cover or address. Feel free to interact in the comment section. I will respond to every comment and Make sure you click the link to access the course page for pre-order to benefit from half price course fees. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like this video for more work. What will be the best architect course entails according to your opinion? The comment section, I'll be waiting with them.